Today, I'm having a conversation with Lamre Akilogu on what it takes to have a winning business idea. So stay with us. Lamre Akilogu is a Nigerian businessman best known as the founder of the e-commerce site Drinks.ng. Born in London, England, Lanray Akilagon became involved in the tech space as a college student. These were his formative years within the tech space, graduating in marketing and multimedia. This led on to joining Universal Pictures, a number of digital marketing agencies, and finally settling at IBM. After a successful career in the digital advertising space, he joined the executive team of Iroko TV, which brought him back to Africa and eventually commerced in the launch of Drinks.ng. Lamra, it's great to have you here with me sharing your journey. And it'll be great to know a bit more about this amazing Nigerian businessman. So, how would you describe yourself in three words? Um, hungry, uh, focused, and resilient. Very important attributes to have. So you are the founder of Dreams.ng. How did you start yeah. this business? I, I previously worked at uh, Europa TV, uh, where a friend uh, ran the business, Jason, uh, who's getting married. Um, and... Uh, you know, when we were in London, I, I was one of the groomsmen that handled uh, the bachelor party and all those things, which is pretty straightforward. Went to Bristol, you know, got a hotel, went to make majestic wine, got some drinks, pretty straightforward. Uh, came to Nigeria, did the same thing, only getting the drinks wasn't as straightforward, which I was pretty shocked about and didn't understand why as well. So, you know, they, they pretty much everybody took me to the open market, said that's how you buy the drinks. That would shock him. Um, and then everyone else had a guy that they called for drinks. And they couldn't understand why such a huge industry with, with such high performance and product globally didn't have a recognized brand that actually just sold beverages to people. So uh, after the wedding, went back to the UK, walked a little bit, spoke to Jason and Bastion. They set up an investment fund. Um, and I was the first investee, so to speak. Uh, from the funds with uh, Drinks.ng, and that's how that started. In your experience as an entrepreneur, what would you say is, or how would you know you have a winning business idea? Uh, a, a lot of people will tell you, look, there's a little bit of uh, research that goes into it, uh, making sure that the numbers work, making sure that the, the, the consumers have a need for what you're offering, making sure that there's a a service viability and there's a niche that is within that uh, category. Um, but there's also a little bit of gut instinct as well in terms of thinking, okay, if I try to do things differently, even though the people don't necessarily feel the need for it, uh, will, will they want it? And sometimes you've got to believe in your different service offering and think, you know something, mm -hmm. you don't know you need it, but I think you need it. In fact, I know you need it. So I'll make you realize that you need it. But you know, the fundamentals have to work as well. Um, and the fundamentals worked. So, yeah, that, that really is it. So it's, it's a little bit of uh, academic research, a little bit of gut instinct. So that, that's what I would say. And I know that there are some young, aspiring entrepreneurs who also like to take the risk in their business to see how far they can go. But, you know, it gets to a point sometimes when you're not, when you're not hitting your milestones and it's like, oh, I'm just going to throw the, the towel away. You know, it just makes you feel like I'm just going to give up. So what would you say to those that have kept and, you and, that, and, and that's what, that's what, that's where it comes back to what I initially said before, which is, see, if you do your homework and the numbers make sense and, and where to get the numbers and how to get the numbers make sense, if it's not coming, it isn't because the, the fundamentals of the business don't work. It's just the implementation of how to get those fundamentals isn't working. So I wouldn't throw in the towel as long as the fundamentals work. I would just keep plowing away, finding out, okay, why is this working? What am I doing wrong? What is it about my execution or my marketing or my ops that isn't making this thing work? So there's something about the process in which you are attacking that solution that isn't quite working. However, if the fundamentals don't work, it won't be a case of throwing in the towel. You just probably shouldn't fly in the first place. So mm. 
it, it really does depend on what's happening. Sometimes you just run out of money. You can't afford to keep on doing iterations. You can't afford to keep experimenting. You can't afford to keep researching and trying different avenues. So you really got to know where you stand and really know what's at your disposal before you take risks. So you can take calculated risks. I take calculated risks. Uh, do I take stupid risks as well? Yes, but stupid risk in the sense that I know this is going to work. I know it's got to work. I don't have enough to make it work, but forget it. Just throw what we've got at it, and it has to work. If it doesn't, but it shows signs of working, like you didn't have enough to make it work, but at least I know it's working. So, And that's where the resilience comes from. It really does depend on the calculated risks and the resilience of the ideas that your beliefs are, and that's, that's where we are. That's amazing. That's, that's really interesting to hear. So seeing where your business is right now, how or what methods do you use to promote your business? E-commerce, e online, digital, digital influencers, uh, display marketing, social media marketing. Um, these Gen Z people have come with this content influencer marketing. Man, don't understand, but they understand it. So I've got a couple of guys that work here that do that. Um, I still don't get it, but they get it. So it's cool. And, and as long as they get it, uh, I'm like, I sit down on the marketing meetings. I listen and I'm like, all right, you look all seem to be in agreement. No problem. <laughs> I'm more straight digital marketing, which is more numbers and statistics orientated. Sorry. And I'm more about that. I get that more. I get search. I get display. I get social media marketing. I get that stuff. What the other stuff, that overly creative Gen Z stuff, let them let them be doing it and it's working and cool. Uh, so those are, those are the avenues that we use. The success that dreams.ng has made today, did you think, you would get to this point many years ago when you first started. Absolutely. To be quite honest, with you, I just never knew where it would be. Um, the idea was to just try and make a difference and try and make a name. Um, yeah. Now, you know, well, almost how many years on? Uh, we're the number one e-commerce store for, for alcohol in Nigeria. We are online distribution partners with the likes of Diageo, Penal Ricard, Moet, Hennessy, Red Bull. You know, we have the best liquor store in Africa. We're about to open in uh, Ghana, Angola, Kenya, and Rwanda. Um, I, have a, I have a business that is potentially going to grow across Africa. I would never have Im imagined that. I, I never would even try to plan it or think about it. Um, and now it has happened. What would you say is the secret to an e-commerce business success? So that's a tricky one because, you know, e-commerce in every state, in every country, on every continent is completely different. The challenges are different. The successes are different. The route to market is different. The consumers are different. Um, so there, there isn't really a broad base a route to what success with e-commerce is. However, if I did have to put some fundamentals on it, um, you, first of all, you need great partnerships. That, that would be the, the most important to me. Um, without the likes of the Diageos, without the likes of Pedro Ricard, Moet Hennessy's, without the, the belief and the support that these guys have, that we wouldn't have been able to succeed in the industry. Yes, we made ourselves relevant and we stayed relevant, but if the partners don't believe in you, it's very difficult to close to impossible for you to be able to succeed in anything that you're doing. Um, you need a great team, second of all. Um, your team has to want to believe in you because I can tell you it's a very hard thing to do in terms of making things work and it, it, it needs a lot of sacrifice it needs a lot of dedication it needs a lot of belief and as a leader your job is to make sure people believe and to be, be able to hire people that believe in your belief and, and and what you want to do but to also keep them motivated to be able to continue to believe in what we're trying to do and then the third part is consumer obsession um to be obsessed about how to keep the consumers happy uh, because they're the people that want to make you grow so be obsessed with how to Make sure that the consumers believe that there's value in what you're doing. Because if they don't see value, it's almost little to nothing you can you can do to keep them engaged, which will not keep make the business grow. Um, and lastly, it's just traffic. A lot, a lot of traffic. <laughs> if you have the traffic and you can keep traffic coming, then you'll find out different ways in which to, to, to fix any iterations. But those three fundamentals to me will, will buy you time and lifeline to make your business a success. Paul well, Lambre, it's been awesome having this conversation with you and I wish you all the best.
in your business. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you.